Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to uh, Introduction to Business Organizations. This is a uh, introduction class to uh, business. So there's 21 chapters, and each one would be a full course length. This gives you a good, solid foundation of how all businesses, from small to uh, multinational corporations, have to operate and function. Um, you're either taking me in an online class or a face-to-face -face class. I teach at community, uh, several community colleges, so look me up. Uh, that's how I pay off for some of my uh, student loans. Uh, the other thing on here, uh, you already have access to my uh, uh, concept maps or mind maps. You have access to the publisher's uh, integrative learn uh, software, which helps you learn the concepts. And look at this uh, overview, about, about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. It is a summarization of what we already discussed in our uh, lectures or in our discussion um, uh, groups uh, online utilizing course uh, blackboard course management system uh, you already read the book and you've uh, jotted notes and everything else so this is just to see hey did I miss anything okay so let's go on so pricing when I'm looking at pricing how do you develop good pricing you know how do you develop uh, you know developing and pricing goods and services Every good and service, remember, when you're looking from a consumer, even from a, a business perspective that we've learned, you know, business to business, or an industrial uh, business, for lack of better words, price has is a good indicator of a quality of the product. Not only the quality, it may be the brand, it may be uh, other uh, uh, items that, you know, uh, makes the price worth it. You know, the total package, the value added. I don't mind paying more if I see that I'm getting more or I'm getting a better quality than other products or services that are out there similar to mine. So how do you develop, uh, so let's go back into developing value. So we're going we're gonna to talk about value, we're going to talk about product line, product mixes, just generally. Remember, I have some students, uh, even my face-to-face -face or even the discussion board, after this class, I'm ready to open up my business. Well, yeah, uh, you may be, and, and, and for some, the, the, that's a good uh, start. But for others, remember, this is just a little bit. So you took at this class, unless all 21 chapters are it's very clear to you, there's more to accounting than what I've talked about here. You have to know the procedures, you know, QuickBook or Peachtree. Uh, that's one of the uh, softwares that uh, at the community colleges, I think the, uh, both or most community colleges, they utilize to teach you um, understanding how to uh, watch your expenses, your budgets, and your income, and, you know, your inflows and outflow, uh, uh, outflows of uh, cash and different transactions and, you know, taxes and minimizing. Everything you're doing as an individual, now you have to do it for a business with a little more uh, rules or eh, sometimes a little more penalty. Okay, so we're going to talk about product life cycle. Again, those of you who read it, just a real quick summarization. When we look at product life cycle, we go through introduction. You know, the different product life cycles, we could charge differently, you know, a, a brand. Uh, right now, you're creating a brand. Those of you who are in my uh, class, you'll be, you're working on a feasibility uh, paper. It's the first draft of a uh, uh, business plan before I spend all that time and effort, does it make sense to open my business here? And you're going to be needing the pricing, and we've already discussed this. Uh, for this feasibility paper right now, all I'm just asking is for a general price. If I walk into your store, what would be, you know, if I buy items, whatever, a restaurant or a retail merchandise, how much would an average customer uh, purchase as you leave? I know some are going to buy some, but on an average, you know, you could say $50. It, uh, whatever that amount makes sense for you, and you may not, you know, if you a car dealer, it's going to be a little bit higher than that. But so you're going to have that average price, and then they're going to say how many customers are coming in, and then you're going to look at your expense size, and this, and it just gives you a ballpark, a uh, summer is, uh, 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 you you just kind of like a ballpark figure that you're estimating that you could do. You won't really know until you open up the business, but you have a kind of good feeling. Yeah, I think this will work it. And now it makes sense that it, we could be sustainable. So when you're writing my pay, uh, writing your uh, the team project together as a team, I don't want to hear, we're going to make lots of money. I don't want to hear, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, cheaper than our competitor. What's the competitor's price? And let's say the competitor's price is $20. We're going to be $15 for the same service plus 
or we're going to be $19. Don't tell me $19.99. Customers, they don't ask that out a penny. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, not even worth the effort. You know, if it's only 50 cents difference from uh, going to my competitor, uh, uh, going to a place I always shop versus you, that may not be enough to motivate me as we've talked in other chapters. So price is still a motivator. It's a motivator. It's a it's a gauge that customers look at the quality or the perceived quality of a product and the demand okay so let's look at it we're going to talk about developing value now i'm going to open this up you have the concept match you got the second tier remember you could always move me faster move me back stop me and this is supplemental to the software and everything else we already discussed so i'm just going to open this up a little bit and i think i usually do like uh let's see 200 yeah 200 may be good let's see Okay, we could do 200, uh, maybe I'll go like 250. Remember, I am live, this is not a, uh, when I say live, it's a recording, when you're looking at it, but I uh, do very little editing. Uh, this is what you'd have when you have it in the classroom, so you have it the same way on here. Uh, and I'll try to discuss, uh, remember, just give me a quick summarization. You already have a good solid foundation. This is just to uh, solidify or glue everything you've learned together, so now you could move it from short-term memory to your long-term memory. The more senses you get involved, me uh, speaking it, uh, you listening to it, uh, you writing it, or you repeating it to yourself, the higher probability you remember it on the final exam that will be coming up very shortly. Okay, so developing, va uh, uh, developing value. And remember, uh, in all my paper, the papers, I'm looking for at least 35 to 45 concepts and vocabulary. So try to use some of these in here that you could utilize. You could utilize, uh, pr uh, 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 you know, the four Ps. Uh, you could utilize developing value as a conceptual idea. The American uh, Association, Marketing Association, looks at value. If, if we're going to look at it from both perspectives, from consumer, from business perspective, and also from the retailer. Good quality or fair price. Adapting products to new market is an ongoing challenge. Remember, I always have to adjust. We're going to talk about product life cycle. My pricing changes as uh, the demand drops and I want to stimulate more and all it does remember, when you drop in the prices raising the prices it's to either increase product uh, your uh, profitability or sometimes you're decreasing your margin uh, for the uh, profit but you're not ever drop it that low that you don't pay for the material your initial cost only usually that happens when you're going bankrupt we're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about that in a few chapters. Up. Okay, so product development is a key activity in any modern business. I don't care from uh, uh, internet to, uh, to to brick and mortar. Okay, products consumers won't give up. And there's some products that, uh, you, you know, let, let's talk about. These are what we call the untouchables. No matter how bad the economy is, they're not going to, uh, uh, they usually don't give up the internet service. Because you know, that's where you're going to do your job hunting, that's where you're going to do, uh, you still have a social connection, and you got a lot of like uh, LinkedIn, you got Facebook, you got other different social medias that we're going to be talking about, which are a way to communicate with other individuals and also a way that you may be able to become more marketable or find that opportunity to let you know, hey, I am available. Okay, cell phone, you need that to, uh, for talking, right? There's connections, uh, cable television. I'm not working, I might as well enjoy, watch something. Discount apparel, I'm always looking for a good, the best deal. Haircuts and coloring, I can't look like a, a, a slob or unkept individual going for an interview. And fast food, eh, I don't want to make a cook, it, 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 keeps my, uh, it keeps me alive, but healthy, I'm not sure. Okay, now expendable. Now, if you're opening up a business, so some of these, you know no matter what economy, depending on the pricing, and depending uh, uh, in the area, you have a good... Uh, probability of being successful even during the, the downturn or economic uh, uh, turmoil that could, uh, could occur. Okay, now expendables. Expendable luxury handbags, you cut back in that, satellite, radio, you know, they always send my son that, I, I don't know, regular radio, a lot of people looking to, to their, uh, uh, their uh, smartphones where they have all the radios, everything else on these satellite radio, but some do, specialty apparel and high-end uh, uh, cosmetics and facials. You got to cut, that's where you're going to cut at, okay? Now, the other thing is distributing product development. How do I distribute product development? Now, the, when I'm looking at distributing, I, I come up with a product, I have an idea, I come up with a concept, I have engineering, I designed it, I or, or, or whatever, I've got the pattern, I've got everything I need. Do I build it in-house? 
do I build it outside the organization, outsourcing, that could be put still within the uh, the state or the U uh, or within the uh, U.S. market or, or continent, in the, you know, in the U.S. Or do I build it outside the U.S. and then just uh, import it back in here and sell it here, or globally depends. Okay, so handling the various uh, parts, your innovation process overall, uh, often overseas, and and the only reason for this is if you. Uh, is the cost the labor cost may be a little bit but you have to look at the quality sometimes you don't get the same quality increase in outsourcing outsourcing has resulted in multiple organization separate by cultural and graphic and legal boundary so now i'm dealing with other suppliers in a different language they may have different work ethics different understanding of quality so they have to be that's where engineering when i've given the specification they have to meet my specification from a business to business perspective from a consumer perspective i'm building something even though they meet my specification i'm looking at the cost reduction so i could be competitive in not only in the u.s market but in the global markets okay so now how do i develop a total product okay so this is just now you just can come up how do i uh, uh, what what parts do I manufacture? So those of you, in, uh, I teach a retail merchandising class uh, at a community college, and I have fashion designer. In fashion, they come up with some great ideas. But to be surviving and pay the rent, come up with an idea that could be marketable to not the masses, but a certain niche, and it could be manufactured with not too much of a high cost, because uh, uh, you know uh, quality, depending on what you're coming in there your whole idea now is to come in open up a business and at least sustain for a couple of years until you understand you thoroughly your market you're just doing the research but now you're in the market and you're actually operating so now you're, you have to be able to learn that okay okay so how do i develop a total product everything customers uh, uh, everything customers evaluate when deciding whether to buy something, okay, that's what they're looking at. So the products uh, uh, evaluated at many different dimensions, but both tangible and intangible. Do I like it? Do I like the color? How, does it, how it makes me feel? Marketers must think like customers. Remember, I always talk on my classes, not what you think, what do the customers think? I may be in an area that's predominantly, uh, 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 let's say, Italian or Korean, and I may not understand them. You know, I mean, I think this is what they know, but you know, I said, well, but unless I'm in that culture or have some from that culture, to say, no, Doctor George, that's not what we like. This is the negative. You should do it this way, and it'll be more acceptable to within the culture because it would be part of the norm. And now you could price them a little bit higher. Doing okay. Potential components for total product offerings. Okay, so if I'm looking at this one, and let me look at this one. I got a diagram here. So here's a diagram. You know, here's everything else. You know, guarantee, speed of delivery, image by advertising, reputation of a producer. This is right here. This is basically the core. And then when I come into there, because this is what gets my attention, the store surrounding, past experiences, internet access, tells me something about it, what kind of service. You know, a lot of people are Googling to see what kind of um, um, uh, uh, feedback they have. Uh, reviews for lack of better words brand name convenience packaging all that so we have all that in here I'm not going to go around it and it has everything else so one thing I want to talk about pricing now if I'm looking at pricing if you have a higher price because it gives you quality but it's so high the customers because of the economic downturn and they're very frugal with their money you could establish a payment plan where there's some interest and no interest but they had the money so utilize the money still keep the product until they uh, pay the last amount it's something like a pawn shop and i don't want to say like a pawn shop because you're a retail business but it, it's in the same concept in pawn shop it, it does the same thing i have some goods i don't want to sell it but i may want to buy it back i have a short term so they give me 30 days and then i kind of buy it back and buy it at a discount or whatever i pay a handling or some kind of uh, uh, restocking fee or whatever but after 30 days i'll come back it's up for sale and he or she could sell at the price that they want to. Okay? Now, yeah, okay, and then you can always discount it by bulk and everything else. All right, so we took care of that. Okay? Now, you have to know the difference between a product line and a product mix. In a real quick nutshell, a product a nutshell, shine. Uh, the product mix is a whole bunch of product lines that complement each other. So if I'm looking at product lines, a group of products are physically similar. Or intended for similar market product lines often uh, include competing brands like Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, 
uh, uh, Coke Zero, Cherry Coke. Uh, you know, and, and so that's a product line, okay? Now, a product mix, okay? Uh, listen, you read it. I'm just tying this up so I don't confuse you. A product mix, the combination of all products offered by a manufacturer, service provider. And, uh, you know, uh, the product mix like this one, and I'm not going to go into the site because I have a lot here. Toothpaste, cosmetics. So these are different, you know, and if I look at uh, 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 toothpaste, it could be different. You have for whitening teeth, for uh, 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 cavity, for softening, all underneath there, but it's underneath this one product line. And then another one is cosmetics. It still makes sense because it's all in the health and facial batteries, you know, diapers, bar soap. So if I'm looking at this, you know, this is all uh, Procter and Gamble's, uh, 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 if I'm mistaken, uh, th that has look at a product mix. They got they do a lot of stuff, and each one are product lines, but it complements each other for their business and operation. Okay, so now what you have to look at what we're going to be looking at. So we got the product mix. You know, product mix, product line. Uh, and I just want to real quickly, if I walk into Office Max or Staples, or whatever. A computer, uh, I'm looking for computers, that's one product line. I'm looking for paper, that's another product line. I'm looking for uh, uh, pencils, another chairs, all different product lines. But I would expect that all complements to make the product mix. I would not expect to walk in either one of those establishments and see them selling cars or lawnmower equipment because it doesn't mix. In their, I mean, they could, I'm not saying they can't. They could give it away, they can't, but it, I wouldn't expect that. I would go like uh, in a hardware store or a home improvement store that I would expect because that would make the compliments the other products somebody would come in there. Okay? Okay, now product differentiation. Differentiation. What makes the product different? English second language. Eh, in its plate, okay? The creation of real or perceived product differences. Why do I want an Apple? It works faster, does it? Why do I want an Android? It's faster, does it? It's the perception and it could be heavier, or it could be something like a feel touch, but it could also be this, uh, by perception of it. Marketers use a mix of pricing, advertising, and packaging to create different images. And examples include a bottle of water, aspirin, fast food, laundry, and detergent. Now, classifying consumer goods or services. You have, and it's broken down into four different classifications. Author did a very nice job. Read it. Industrial consumer goods. One is convenience goods, location, ease, little effort, frequency included, gas, milk, eggs. Uh, you know, if you go to a gas station, you don't make as much money off the gas, though you think they do. You're making more money of the convenience and everything else because I'm already there. I can buy the uh, whatever I want, even though I'm buying a higher price. I look at my time utility. I'm going to drive, park, and go to Jewel or Mariano's or Walmart or Target or wherever you're going to go and buy something where I could pick it up right there, even though I could buy a lot more there uh, at the other stores. Okay, now shopping goods are a little different. And then also convenience stores could be l like the machines, uh, the vending machines. You're right there, you can pay a dollar fifty for a, a, a water because a little cold, and for dollar fifty, I could buy uh, uh, maybe uh, 10 bottles. Okay, now shopping, buy only after comparing value, quality, prices, and style. Now, how do you compare? A lot of people go to the store, but they do most of their initial comparison through the internet to look at you know compare these and you see the difference and then you want to actually look at it you know clothing line and uh, uh, appliances furniture and child care home remodel now specialty is a little bit different just smaller niche so if you're going to open up a specialty store you have to somehow bring the individual they'll seek you out but the, you have to still advertise a little differently because you don't want to just do mass advertising because many people may not you're spending your money just going out there like hopefully somebody comes you're very focused like a laser boom here's what i'm looking at it and i saturate that area small market make an effort to get them products with unique characteristics and brand identity they could include uh, 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 automobiles ritz carlton tiffany you know all the high end you know, be careful for coats because you, you'll have uh, some individuals uh, uh, I, i'll let it go like that you remember? It depends on your operation and business. I'm a business person. I'm not going to say one way PETA or not for uh, fur coats. Uh, I, I'm, we're a business. Depending on what you, you know, as long as there, uh, it makes sense for your operation and your conscience and everything else, you have no issues. I have no issues. I'm a supplier or a business person. I'll deal with you. Okay, now consumer may have a different outlook on that. 
but so your prices may be a little bit higher. Unsolved issues, products customers aren't aware of, and they use the example, haven't thought of buying until they need them. And they look if your car breaks down or a rental service or uh, if you've never been a dentist and you, you, your tooth starts hurting now, then you're gonna uh, try to find one now. Okay, now industrial goods and services makes, you know, so just uh, like, uh, when I look at the industrial goods and services, there's four things you should be looking at. Makes other goods and services for resale. So uh, I'm not the end user. I buy goods and I make it. So other people, like I'm an auto, uh, automobile manufacturer. I buy all the pieces, I make the car, and then I sell it. So I'm buying a lot of pieces from different suppliers, from different vendors. That's why I'm not taxed because I'm, I'm, I'm creating it. Industrial good. You know, it's part of the process. And then I'm looking at the end uh, use of the product. So when you're looking at it, and I use toilet paper, for example. If I buy toilet paper and I'm using it for my own consumption, I should pay the tax because it's basically a, 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 a residential type of an item or a item that I use as part of my business. If I buy the toilet paper because I'm putting it into a basket for uh, the students returning back to college or in a knapsack or something else for guys, a toiletry going to college, then I shouldn't pay taxes because that is a component in this that I'm going to sell later on as a whole package bundled uh, to the ultimate customer. I'm not using it, I'm just using it as a component. That's why I use end use of the product, and everyone knows the toilet paper could have two different end uses. One is for my personal end use, the other end use is basically I'm just putting it into a another used as a component of a major product or service that will be ultimately uh, 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 selling to the customer. Okay? Now, heavy use of pay, uh, individuals, so I'm looking at uh, industrials, you know, uh, Motorola, Abbott, uh, the larger companies do not come to me, I come to them. Products uh, used in production of other products, sold in a business-to-business -business market, B2 to B2. I know some books I've read, they go B and they use a T, to, you know, they say that's not it. But look at it, there's two different businesses uh, working, so I don't have no problem with that. Okay, and they include installations, capital, accessory, supplies, and services. Categories of industrial goods and services, and here's just a chart. And so you got different goods, industrial goods, production, unsought, so you, you have, same thing, okay. Uh, raw materials, a little different, uh, that comes in this way. Do you see we're looking? Here's the consumers, and here's the industrials. And installation, equipment, everything I'm, I'm doing uh, uh, for the support good as part of my uh, service. And, you know, if there's only 30 days, after 30 days, for another $200, we will extend your warranty. And you look, hey, I only paid $400. In another two years, I want the new style. Forget that. So when you're looking at pricing for the warranties, and if you have quality products, you know it's going to last for 10 years, bring your prices down. You have more people taking the warranty because the price differential makes sense. You know, I'm paying two hundred fifty dollars. You're gonna charge me one hundred fifty or two hundred dollars for a warranty. Come on, give me a break. Fifty bucks, I'm gonna get out of it. Not worth it. Okay. But it, from my perspective, but some people do pay it. Sorry, I must clarify that. Okay, so we had that. Okay, so we're all done. Okay, use of packaging. Now, change and improvement their basic look, packaging, say McDonald's green packaging, meaning environmental, microwave uh, packages and tunas. If you look at the book, they change a little bit. Instead of in a can, you can open up. It's more, uh, uh, they're utilizing a different uh, material, probably, uh, uh, for lack of better words, a better, either better quality, keeps the flavor in, and hopefully, and most likely, it's at a lower cost in the cans and easier for disposable. Uh, and easier for customers, uh, people to eat at any time. You just rip it open instead of have a can opener. I've got or I got to open up the other thing. Easier for or reusing. So you can see the benefits. Uh, so I'll charge them a bit more. Okay, key functions of uh, packaging: attract the buyer's attention, give indication of the price, value, and uses, provided warranty information and warnings, explain the product's benefits, describe and provide information about the products, and protect the goods inside uh, uh, and to be tampered uh, proof, okay? All right, so now we finish that, the slide over here. We're doing pretty good, we should be done in about another, uh, what do we have, oh, about another half an hour. Okay, now bundling, you heard bundling. Bundling has the best thing. Now, what's the unbundling shot? So grouping two or more products together 
and pricing them as a unit. Hopefully, you get a discount. It comes like economies of scale, or uh, let's leave it at that from a pricing perspective. So you're looking now. If you bundle too much stuff and I said we well, got all this and I don't use it, I want to unbundle. I don't use half the stuff. Why should I pay for it? I only want the basic model. So you, uh, bundling has its positives, and you know cost reduction, easier to sell more, sustainable. But unbundling it also has its positive, and uh, you know when I look at the flexibility of the consumer. What does that market or what does consumer want or actually need, and what do I bundle? Okay, uh, Virginia Airline bundles a door to door limo service and in flight message with some tickets, and financial institutions bundle advice with purchases. And if I'm looking at the unbundle with new iPhones, if you look at $700, $800 before it's part of a, contra a contract, so you didn't, it didn't look like you had that much of a thing, now you gotta pay so much up front, you get $300 off, but you now an installment plan, so you could always buy it out or do it so they kind of un they bundle it but kind of like i want to call it stacking now hey, i should come up with a new phrase i should do the whole thing i'm stacking instead of bundling so you kind of stack it up instead of bundling you just get it all one bundle no stacking but you heard it first from dr george stacking new concept okay let's look at understanding branding you yourself are a brand. When you see another individual and you talk to somebody, you will kind of understand. Is he a talkative person? Is he an introvert? Is he helpful? For whatever. You have a brand. Your product in your business, your name, your business, is to protect the brand. If you hurt the brand, it hurts everything. Look what happened with Volkswagen. They did some emission modification in the software. They lied. The brand suffered. Not only that, it's because if they did that, what else did they not tell me? Are they using the right material? Are they cutting corners someplace else? I am not aware. If I'm an environmentalist, oh my goodness, I've been polluting. I've been so happy with the little uh, Volkswagen diesel. Now I'm the worst polluter. I feel bad. So the brand is hurting. You have to, now their whole thing is how do I regain confidence and bring the quality of the brand up? Okay? So the brand, what's the brand? Is a name symbol that identifies goods or services and distinguishes them from your competitors. A trademark, I'll just close that off. Uh, a, a brand that has exclusive legal protection for both its brand name and design. The name game, when I look at the, look at the brand name, and I kind of thought this was cute, I was bringing it up just in case you forgot. Blackberry B sounds like, uh, 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 sound, uh, B sounds relaxing and Y sounds friendly. Oreo, or is a, a mirror, an image of a cookie. Viagra, geez, a V is for vigor, vitality, and victory. And Wi-Fi, the double symbols, uh, two players, uh, uh, does a pronunciation. Okay? All right, so now let's look at this one. So we got that, 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 that. Manufacturers brand with, that uh, distribute products nationally. You have private labels. A lot of companies, Walmart's very good at private labels, a whole section on that. Uh, products that carry the retailers or distributors name brand instead of the manufacturers. Generic foods has nothing else. And usually generic foods, nothing wrong with it. It's just that it may not meet the manufacturer's quality. It's got to be a little bit off-site or something else. So, they, uh, so there's uh, no name on there. Still the same ingredients, still the same quality. It's usually just uh, something else that's uh, a little bit irregular. But you get a good discount on it. You know, put it in your mouth, you eat it if it's a food. Clothing may be a little bit uh, different. Non-brand products that sell at discounts compared to manufacturers or uh, dealer's brand. Knockoff brands are basically legal copies of a national brand. You think you got a Rolex, but it's just something imitation. If it's only twenty nine ninety five Rolex, real authentic. <laughs> Come and talk to me. I'll sell you something else. Okay, value of a brand name and associated symbols. That's brand, brand equity. What's the brand name worth if you're selling it or you're uh, uh, merging? Okay, brand loyalty. Uh, the degree in which consumers are satisfied and are committed to future, uh, future uh, purchases. Okay, now let's see what we have in here. So now branding awareness. So now I, I create a brand from the beginning. I have to uh, make them uh, aware. That's why a logo comes in here. I have public relations. I have advertising. I have people give away t-shirts or, or sweatshirts that have my brand name on there. So I'm making brand awareness. And how quickly and easily a brand name comes to mind. And I think uh, if I look at this, uh, when someone mentions a product, a category, when you think of AT&T, you already know communication. 
When you think of Abbott, you know it's a pharmaceutical. When you think, well, it could be Abbott, uh, um, uh, all, uh, what do you call it, uh, home appliance. I mean, I'm just kidding because there is one in this area. But mostly you think of Abbott, you think of pharmaceutical. All right? Now, brand in, in, insistence will not accept substitute brands. I mean, some customers, you know, brand awareness. Once I know the brand, because I know the quality. You know, a lot of times you have a generic uh, the drug or in a brand name. A lot of times, you know, you look at the price different. Uh, it's got the same components, but its base may be different. But, you know, and certain items you do, but other items you may, your document says it, it has to be the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the brand name, not the generic. Okay, brand, brand preferences. You know, well, you prefer one brand to another. This is how we're going through this whole different phases uh, of uh, conditioning you to always buy my brand or come to my store. Brand association, linking a brand to favorable images uh, like celebrities or geographic area. Uh, brand manager, person responsible for a particular brand handles all the elements of the brand marketing mix. Made America, home countries of America's favorite brands. Now look at this, you see Made America, where are the home countries of the brands? Budweiser, Br uh, Belgium, Brazil. They had a big thing about the, you know, uh, Budweiser International when they had that knowledge. It's not made here in the U.S. even though it's the same formula. They just had their so, uh, manufacturing here. They could not yeah, uh, name it as a uh, foreign import. Okay, uh, Alka Seltzer, Germany. Good Humor, UK, Holland. 7-Eleven, uh, Japan. And, you know, because they're, uh, they're, they might have started off here, but they were uh, purchased out to a merger. Hostile or friendly. Gerber, Switzerland. Firestone, Japan. John Hancock, Canada. Frigidaire, uh, Sweden. Holiday Inn, UK. Jeez, there's none here in the US. Oh my goodness. We got 85% of the service and we don't have any brands. I'm just kidding you. But we have to do it. Okay, so that's a brand manager. Uh, made in America. Okay, now brand equity. The value of the brand name associated symbols. Awareness, loyalty, perceived quality images. If I look at North Face, everyone wears that. It's already high quality. Sometimes they give it away to newscasters. I see them on TV or whatever. They're advertising for nothing for them because they got national uh, 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 audience viewing them. Okay, brand loyalty. The degree to which consumers are satisfied and are committed for, for uh, future purchases. Okay, so now what do we have? Creating, bringing brands to the market. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Uh, let me see. If I'm going to bring brands to the market, new products, i got to come up with an idea. So the first thing is coming up with a general uh, uh, idea generation. And that could be simple. If you look at a lot of the things that came up, simple ideas and they're multi-billionaires. I wish I would. Sometimes I think about them and someone beats me to it. So think about it. So now i got an idea. And I say, hey, that's what we're doing here. Give it feasibility based on customers' wants and needs. Will it satisfy a need? Is there a market for it? We've talked about that in Chapter 13. Product screening reduces the number of uh, new products a firm is working on. Focus on the most promising. Remember, because we're still talking uh, developing pricing. It's going to cost me. So I want to be effective and efficient and still creative uh, uh, developing it. Develop analysis. Focus on the cost estimates. And sales forecast to get an idea of potential profitability. Not going to make a lot, they're going to sell a lot. Give me a number, give me a percentage, what are you basing it off? How to bring in new products to the market. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. Okay, now the next step would be development. So now I've got the product analysis. I do some prototypes or some testing of the service. I do concept testing, take the product idea of consumers to testing, and then I do commercialization. Bring it to the market, promoting the goods to distributors and realtors and developing a, pro a promotional campaign. Okay? All right, so I got that. That's what I did. Now, How to bring new products to market, that's the next one. You have to bring up, that's why I, I just had it the wrong spot. Okay, how do I bring products to the market? 
First of all, you got to build up slowly. Don't rush. You open up your business. You know what's going on. You don't know your customers yet. You may think you know them. You don't know if they're walking in the store. You just have a general idea through secondary data and a small sample size of primary data. It's a good indicator that you're in the right. But until you get in there now, the more details so you have a general product for now, the money's in the more specialized. Or what brings them back is that you have that unique thing, that specialization or that one item they can't find anywhere else. And when they come in, they'll usually buy more. Design, as long as your your product mix uh, complements all your product lines. Okay, design for a single function. Uh, pick one function and make it the best you can. Remember, when you're starting off, package it perfectly. Unboxing your new buy is the best part. Make it exciting. My packaging department would feel very happy when they was working for packaging. Become a status symbol. Make it something to show off. And this is fast company. They're a pretty good company, just general information. Okay, so make the prototype, bring it to, uh, okay, uh, uh, commercialization, bring it to the market, promoting the product to distributors, realtors, and developing a promotional campaign. And we talked about that last chapter in um, uh, marketing. Okay, so let's look at now product life cycle. When I look at the product life cycle, we all go through a life cycle. Every business goes through a life cycle. Every country goes through a life cycle. They go through a, 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 a cycle. So the first one, different strategies, theoretical look at what happens to sales and profits for a product over time. Okay, it's your introduction, low profit or loss, all electric cards, R&D, research and development, I could charge higher. Okay, then now the market grows, rapid sales, hybrid cars, and then it matures, it's a uh, uh, market uh, uh, sales peak, and then it declines, and then falling prices and everything else. So let me just show you the chart, and here's how the chart goes. Remember everything I had it up, down, through, you got it all, and it's declining. Video cassettes, who has video cassettes unless you got the old ones and you haven't converted them over, but those are already on the way out. So something else is DVDs, and pretty soon is Blu-rays, and pretty soon it'll be yellow rays or red rays, whatever rays. Okay, so that takes care of one of the product life cycles, and I had a. Uh, okay, so that's the product life cycle to grasp for our visuals, and now we look at a product life cycle and marketing mix. And again, I'm not going to go through it. You can read it. Stop me now. Blow it up. But make it larger and then bring it back down when you finish close it off and then move forward in a product life cycle stages sales and profit again this is another chart this talks about different life cycle and the profits and, and your competitors okay wasn't too bad okay so now we're looking at pricing objective what are my pricing objectives there's five that you should always consider. Probably more, but these are the main ones. Achieving a target return on investment of profit. Building traffic, bringing people in. Achieving a greater market share because I have the right price. Creating an image. Remember, if I start off my business with a low price, it's hard to raise it uh, because I already set the image at a lower quality. Uh, most of the consumers will relate uh, the price to the quality. So I can set it at a higher price, a higher quality, fill the market out. I can always lower it down. Easier to lower it down than to raise it up. Or I could do discounted or coupons or something to keep the price where it's affordable to that market. Okay. Now pricing strategies. So those are objectives. So I look at cost per eight. Now these are different pricing strategies. You have to at least have one or two, and it depends on your market, and it depends, and it could be a several. It depends on the different product line and product, you know, for your mix, which one they use. You have cost base, uh, uh, that's an easy one. Measures cost of producing a product, including materials, labor, overhead, and add a profit margin. Now if I look at the cost uh, on that, uh, let's see, cost base pricing, yeah, we'll, we'll leave and add a uh, margin on that. Okay. All right. So now the, uh, the easiest to do, but if your expenses are so high and you add a margin and you're hiring a competitor, you better have a value or they're not going to come to you. Okay, target costing. What will the market pay? And you're looking at what's out there. 
You want to be add it or lower or subtract it, desire profit and cost to make it. So basically, you look into these two. You could choose this one. This one, at least, what's the market, and come back and see if you can afford it, if you can make it at that price. Otherwise, you're out of it. Or you just whatever it is, I just add it onto it, and I do a marketing campaign, and make a per. Hopefully, hope the perception is that it's a, a higher quality or whatever. Okay, now competitive base uh, pricing. It could be any of these. Remember, I just listed all of them. Competitive base pricing. What rivals are charging. And you could charge more if you have a higher quality or you there's something that uh, uh, they do not supply. Okay, market price is for the buyers and sellers. Uh, sellers v value pricing services that fair uh, uh, price. Don't say cheap and expensive is value pricing. High low pricing. Uh, using the regular prices that are higher than the everyday uh, uh, listed prices, except you're in special sales when they're lower. Price leadership. You could be at leader firms. Competitors follow, and you just see when they release what's going to happen with uh, uh, my uh, personal, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 doctors or anything else, depending on the, the demand that's going to happen with, uh, uh, you know, the, the demand for the product, for lack of better words, okay? So do I raise it up or lower it, or do, do I follow it, or am I the one that... Uh, uh, looking at the customer's demand. If demand's dropped because it's in the maturity stage or in decline, I gotta lower the prices. So you use part of them, you have them all. Now the last one we're gonna do is a couple more, but this is the one, the break-even analysis. If I look at the break-even analysis, I'm looking at several things. I'm looking at my break-even, after I paid all my rents, I'm looking at my total fixed cost. Here's my fixed cost that's gonna uh, for the business, uh, business. After I paid everything else, everything I'm building or using out there, you know, I paid my mortgage, it's all paid, I'm there for 30 days. Now if I'm doing other stuff or uh, using my facilities after I break even, whether it's making so many items, that's all more of I'm just it's a variable cost. Okay, so you got total cost, variable cost, and how to find a break even. So break even analysis produce uh, uh, produce used to determine profitability at various levels of sale. Break even points is where revenue equals cost, and that's revenue equals my cost and my expenses. Total fixed cost, all costs that remain the same no matter how much is produced or sold. That could be your labor, that could be your mortgage, no matter if, you know, I could run, a, look at it this way, if I run an apartment and I never go in there, I still gotta pay the rent. So that's a, then a good use of my uh, assets or facility. Variable costs that change according to level of production. How to find a break even point, and I'll just show you the formula there, and you have it, how to break it. The break even point equals the total fixed cost, and that would be FC, divided by the price of one unit, and uh, that would be P for production, and minus the variable cost of one unit. Okay? Okay? Let me see what I have here. All right, let's look at the example. There we go. So if you have a fixed cost, just trying to figure out, if you had a fixed cost of 200000 a variable cost of $2 uh, per item, and you sell your product for $4 each, what would be the break-even point? i give you the answer here. Gee, I was supposed to hide that for you. It wasn't coming. I was clicking on it, and it wasn't moving. So now it's going. Uh, I got a lot open, all right? And I, uh, I might have to add a little more memory to my computer. So that's my break-even analysis. Now, the other one is pricing alternatives. I could do skimming prices. It is bring new products high to recover the costs, uh, the research and development, more the introduction I could get away. Make high profits while the competition is limited. Once it goes into the growth, competitors come in, it's going to be higher. Penetration prices. I, uh, uh, prices uh, lower with the hope of attracting more people in and then discourage companies from competing in the market I just sell more at a lower price and for competitors going to say it's not worth that effort so they don't want to come in remember the comp competition is going to come in there when they either have their expenses are lower or that they could compete with your pricing and still make a profit okay um Everyday low pricing, setting prices lower than competitors with no special sales. And I think Kohl's is like that. Kohl's a, a, a clothing line, a, a, a retail store. Okay, now, um, pricing strategies of retailers. 
you have high low pricing you know using regular prices that are higher than everyday uh, list prices stores accept during uh, sales when they are lower psychological pricing pricing at a uh, at a price point that make the products seem less expensive. Well, we did a lot on pricing. Come on. I, I, there's a lot. Remember, this is just a summarization. So now let me just bring this back down to our... It's stuck again. There we go. Uh, view. Uh, let's see. I do about 150. Okay. I'll bring it down. And I'll just bring it down this way. I can control it. So we covered everything about pricing. What is your price? When you look at the prices, you have to look at the differential to the next level. You have to look at the prices of your competitors. You have to look at the prices of your expense and subtract that. You have to look how much pro uh, profitability you want. A lot of times you may reduce your price. Your, if you can't do anything with the expenses, you're reducing your price of your profitability. You see car dealers do that. If they need something to break even, remember the break even point, they have to pay the mortgage and everything else. They just need something to pay for. They're not making much, but that profit will basically pay off the mortgage or the lights or whatever. And so they're breaking even, but it's a sale so they can survive to the next time. Look, if you don't have that much money, you're eating hot dogs. When you have a little more money, you're eating uh, uh, caviar. I want one extreme to the other. All right, I like hot dogs, but no caviar though. All right, so we talked about developing prices, how to distribute it. You make sure you know the difference between product line and product mix. Product line is a lot of product line. Product mix is a lot of product line. They have to complement each other. Otherwise, they'll confuse the customer. Unless you're a dollar store, it has a little bit of everything. But they really don't. They look like a miniature Walmart. Okay, your miniature Kmart. So uh, what makes your product different? Product differentiation. Uh, classifying customer goods and services. What are industrial goods? What are they looking for? We talked about packaging. It's your silent salesperson. It's also your protector. You know, if you buy a little uh, flash drive, man, it takes me a saw. I got to go out to, uh, to cut it to get that thing out. Big like this, you can't steal it. You have anti-theft all over it. Okay, key functions of packaging. What does it do? Protect, sell. What's bundling? What you know? What's stacking? Dr. George came up with stacking. Instead of bundling, I just stack it up. Okay, understanding branding. Right? Uh, branding. Remember, brand. Your brand is what brings customers to it. Your brand brings uh, 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 name recognition, and your brand it gives you re re rep re repetitive customers. Plus, when you come in with a new product line, they trust the brand. They figure you're going to do all right with it. And pricing alternative and strategy. So we covered a lot. So remember, my name is, uh, you know, this is chapter 14. Just a good idea, just a basic understanding. You'll still end up taking accounting, managerial accounting. You'll take financing. All this pricing will come in what makes sense. But right now, you have to get that feeling for your prices. It, you know, if you're starting a business, don't look at you want a big profit margin. You start off good, get your name, brand, recognition. Get it in there, then come in with a specialty item, come in with something else to bring people in, and that market could be a higher quality and it could change. If I look at Costco's and Sam, if you look at the chicken, we just bought it, four ninety nine, both of them, bigger chicken than Walmart ever has for the same price. Why? They're losing money on the chicken. If you look at the uh, talk to them, they're not even breaking even, but that's the signature. People come in for that chicken. Well, oh man, I might as well buy bread. I might as well just, what do they have on sale? Wow, look at all that. I gotta get them into the store and I have to have the prices. When I walk into the store, if I have all high end prices and I wanna be high end, fine, that's what I wanna do. If I'm a medium size cus uh, store pricing, medium range, I walk in, I got a whole high end, I'm gonna right away think this is a high end store, which is not, and then your customers aren't coming in, all right? So uh, again, my name is Dr. George Machaki. I teach at two uh, uh, community colleges. I'm a contractor for them. Uh, I teach at uh, a College of Lake County, Lake County, and I teach at Harper. They're underneath the same government, one's in Cook County, one's in Lake County. Community colleges are the best price for your money. I'm always put a, a spin on them. Whether you're taking me at the, you know, one of the colleges, try to go to the community colleges. You have good instructors. They're at a reasonable price. They're qualified. They have the same thing. Uh, you know, they got their doctors. Many of them have their doctors. They come out of the business sector. And you learn, they could relate, they understand the local market, they could connect, there's a lot of help at community colleges, small business administration. There's so much for a business and for the residents, you're paying your taxes, utilize us, we're very effective, we're very good prices. And then after you got a solid, good foundation, 
to go on to your bachelor's or when you open up your business give a donation back to the college and some kind of grant to help other students or even help some of us instructors who are trying to pay off our student loan so call up and say hey what class is dr george teaching i like his style and sign up for my classes and college uh, makes out good pricing i make out you know it's not the best pay but it's good enough and it, it, it also helps uh, it's another inflow and you make out because you have more disposable income that it, you could give back to the community back into the economy and then everyone is helping and we could pay off our uh, uh what do you call it uh, uh balance the trade and balance our payments and also pay off our student loan and I'll talk to you on, I think the next uh, chapter, if I'm mistaken, is either distribution or utility. But you'll find out. Look in the book, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Again, my name is Dr. Bert Machaki, and thank you for spending this time with me. And I hope this is informative uh, uh, learning. It gives you a good, solid foundation. Bye. Oops.